we're going to talk about Ben Hogan's book, Five Lessons. You know, I've got the hardback and the paperback here. They're uh, really the same, except there's a, a little extra color in the hardback version. The paperback is completely black and white. Um, now, this is the best-selling golf book of all time. If you look at it on Amazon, it's still the number one selling golf book. Uh, in fact, if you look in the top 50 golf books, four of them are some version of this book, uh, be it the hardback or the print book, the uh, audio book, the Kindle version, and uh, oh, there's one other <laughs> version in there. I, oh, it's the Kindle uh, free program version. So there, are, this book is really the, if you add them up, Besides being number one, it would be the far and away number one selling golf book. Uh, even today, and it's, uh, what, 70 years old. It was printed in the 1950s. So let's go ahead and look inside and see what we got. I'm going to use the color version uh, for this. Uh, Hogan's, it's got a Ford. Uh, here's the original copyright, 1957 was the original year. Uh, let me just get to the... Uh, now, unlike his previous book, um, Power Golf, which was had a little bit about the swing, but had a little bit about everything, this book is specifically about the swing. And by the swing, I, I don't mean chipping or... Uh, anything like that. It's the long swing. It's the swing you would take off the tee. Um, or your full swing. Um, and he divides it up into five parts. The grip, he talks a lot about the grip in here. Uh, his grip uh, talk is not always uh, standard. He's got his own way of doing it. Doing it. Uh, stance. The first part is the back swing. The second part is the down swing. Then he's got a, a review. Uh, fundamentals, it's, this is really just a uh, preface uh, to everything, uh, explaining how we got here. Um, it's one of the few sections that doesn't have a lot of pictures. <laughs> uh, then we get to the grip and we start getting these nice uh, line drawing pictures. This book is famous uh, for the line drawn pictures. Uh, but you notice one difference here, this is an orange. Um, that would be black and white in the uh, paperback uh, version. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you start seeing this. He starts talking about the grip, and it's got uh, Hogan's fundamentals. Uh, if you've read it about the grip, about how to take it, he uh, talks a lot about using a short thumb, which is not standard. He puts his thumb on top of the uh, grip, uh, not off to the side, which is uh, not standard. Um, so you see he's got a lot of uh, um, things that are not standard yet. There's a lot of good information in here on taking a, taking a grip um, and getting your grip down. If you don't, if you follow this, you could do worse than following Ben Hogan's uh, information for taking the grip. But you should take this part, the grip with a grain of salt. Like I said, a lot of the things he teaches, he used a very weak grip. Uh, when he golfed, and that's what he's teaching here is a weak grip uh, that may or may not work for you. Uh, like I said, the thumb is on top of the club. It's not off to the side or it's on top of the grip. But uh, it's an overlap grip is the one he teaches in here as well. Uh, but again, you've got these great line drawings uh, on here. This is a particular, I think, particularly good drawing right here. Uh, explaining how you should be lined up. You know, a lot of people angle up. I think this is good information for the way your grip should, uh, your grip and your arm should line up. I, overall, I like the way Hogan holds his arms at a dress uh, as opposed to a lot of other people. Uh, he also goes through some information what happens if your grip is faulty. Um, Just 
a lot of good. Okay, now we're going to get to the uh, stance. And uh, he spends a lot of time on the stance, which is good. A lot of people don't. Uh, he spent a lot of time on the stands in his previous book as well, and I think his previous book, uh, it may even be better than this one when it comes to the stands. He has some great information on, uh, on a stand in relation to the club base. I think Power Golf is a book everybody should read along with this one uh, if you really want to understand Hogan. It's kind of a loss. This one's kind of overridden it. But uh, this... Uh, this picture of the stance on page 41, I, I really like this setup. Uh, you know, a lot of people teach, uh, you know, you should be bent over and lean, leaning one way or the other at your stance, you know, whether it's a reverse K or something else. Uh, he really just recommends an upright stance, and I think this is a great stance, actually, to take uh, in that drawing. Uh, over here, he starts talking about your feet. Uh, I also like this. Uh, you know, your trail foot is at a right angle to the line. It's not splayed out. It's at a right angle. And your lead foot, it's it's kind of splayed out a little bit. Uh, he gives different reasons than I do for why you should do this, but uh, I think we've come to the same conclusion for different reasons uh, that this is the best stance or setup for your feet. Uh, here he starts showing some errors that can occur if you've got your right foot positioned incorrectly. Uh, shows you how to hold your arm. Uh, this is one of the famous pictures from his book, uh, How to Hold Your Elbows, and thinking of keeping your arms, you know, tightly tied, tied together, almost like there's, you know, cords around them, keeping them tight. Uh, most people don't do this, though even though it's actually good advice. And with his system, it works all the way through the swing. So it's good advice for if you're looking at a Hogan style swing, it's good advice to do this. Uh, this picture uh, again shows the use of color in this book as opposed to uh, the black and white and the slight advantage you've got getting the hard back and that you'll get these color pictures in here at least an additional color uh, showing you some information uh, here he's talking about pointing your elbows at your hips uh, when Hogan just as a general rule if you go through his stuff when he talks about pointing at your hips he's really talking about your core uh, he's, you know most people think of your hips as the outside of your hips but uh, really your hip bone runs all the way across your body and if you think of it that way Ho what Hogan's talking about when he says point at your hips makes a lot more sense he, he's really talking about pointing your elbows at your co body's core uh, not necessarily the, the outside of your hips uh, here he shows how to take a stance just this kind of semi-sitting what he calls the uh, semi-sitting position. And he shows that you've been more at the knee, he believes you've been more at the knees than at the back. And uh, if you do some angle measurements on uh, Ben Hogan, he was probably more upright than uh, m many of the golfers of his, of his day. So uh, he's definitely a much more upright golfer than most people think. More examples on how to get you to, to bend your knees when you're down. Uh, but again, we're still just in the stance where he breaks out. Uh, again, another example of the use of color in here versus the black and white drawing. Let me find the black and white drawing from page 58. Yeah. See, if you compare compare these two drawings, the color run versus the black and white. I mean, the black and white is certainly understandable, but it really adds a lot to have that just little splash of color on there uh, that you get with the hardback version. So if, if you're a big Hogan fan and you, you would really like, or you really want to study Hogan, I think the 
uh, it's worth a few extra bucks to find a used version of the uh, hardback uh, that has the color in it. Again, showing his stance, uh, it's this uh, classic not leaned over stance uh, that he used. And now we get to the first part of the swing, which is the back swing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is a classic picture of Ben Hogan right here and uh, at the top of the back swing. And it's very different from the, the image of his top of the back swing uh, that he showed in Power Golf. Um, he had changed his swing by now, and this is also post-accident, uh, but uh, if you look in power golf, he would have been turned much more, and his arm would have been raised much more. He has a much flatter swing uh, at this point. Uh, uh, but he starts off, he talks about the waggle, and he shows you waggling his hands. Um, the waggle was a big part for him, uh, and I know it is for some people, not for others, but uh, Ben Hogan taught, taught waggling the club almost like uh, uh, is an intimate part of his swing, a very important part of his swing. Um, here it goes through the whole swing process and shows the correct order of the back swing. Again, they're nice pictures here of Ben Hogan. This top of the backswing position, uh, if you get a copy of Power Golf and compare it, you'll see how different that looks from this top of the backswing position in Power Golf. Uh, uh, here's a famous pane of glass uh, image that. Uh, Hogan first published this, and now it's been, you know, of course it's been used by millions of people. Uh, it comes out of this book. It shows how influential this book uh, is. Uh, again, the interesting use of color here uh, just adds a little extra splash and understanding uh, to the images. Second part of the swing, the downswing. Uh, this is, he mostly teaches, this is a hip turn, uh, but he said he's got everything in here, and uh, I have no reason to think he doesn't. Uh, again, here's the famous pane of glass uh, analogy being used. Uh, Hogan was a one plane, very flat swinger, uh, and it shows here. Uh, here it shows about, you know, starting the turn with your hips and angling that up. He also uses a lot of caps in here. I wish he wouldn't do that, but he did. Uh, and this is the famous rubber band uh, uh, analogy. Think of like you had a rubber band hooked and your hips are pulling your arms and everything around it. The point of here is to emphasize the hip movement is a hip movement in the downswing, not an arm movement. Uh, Hogan was uh, not just a uh, uh, passive arm person, though. He talks about timing the arms and throwing them arms down, and this shows you the example here. Uh, and he's got several exercises in here, or analogies to try to get you through the idea that you should be throwing your arms through the swing. Um, he does talk about timing here though, that you, you need to time your arms and it's not just a throw from the top move, you kind of get them going in like halfway through. You throw the arms through, so there's definitely a, t a big timing interval in learning that. Uh, this is the world famous pronating the wrist uh, part. It just shows that you rotate the wrist through the swing. Um, I don't think he means here that you're supposed to actively roll your wrist in the swing. A lot of people have taken it that way. I think what he means by this example, uh, as much as, as I've read on Hogan and his swing and other things he said, that you're supposed to let it happen. You're not supposed to be squaring up. Uh, manually trying to square up your wrist, but it's it's just something that naturally happens and you shouldn't get in the way of it. 
just naturally let your arm roll. And then here's the whole swing pattern uh, in line drawings. And finally the summary and review, which is just a wrap up of everything he's told and it, other things you can do in here. Uh, mostly text, a little bit of his background. He talks about the 1930s and 1946, you know, when it changed, started to change his swing. Uh, He's got a review of the grip, which is nice, really. You could probably just go to this chapter. Uh, but again, he's got a couple of strange things. You know, there's a thumb of your lead hand is on top. Uh, most people lay it off to the side. He puts it right on the top. He had a very weak grip, and that's what he teaches is a weak grip. Of course, a weak grip also uh, uh, leads to slicing and hitting off to the right. Uh, of course, he's probably, you're probably better off having a weak grip than too strong a grip, but that's another story uh, for another time. Uh, he's got a review of the stance. Uh, again, some repeat some of the pictures, but they're good pictures here. Uh, notice this little bit of color here that points out the hip that you might miss if it's in black and white. A little bit of color here, uh, just enough. Uh, a little extra. You got a part of the swing. Uh, second part of the swing, which is the downswing. Uh, this part is really laid out better in Power Golf. He teaches it here, but it's really, he's got better examples in Power Golf. Uh, See how far the ball should be away and uh, where your feet should be positioned, uh, open or closed. But uh, it's hard to get from this. But what he's doing is the shorter the uh, club, the closer you should be holding it to you. You should not be bending over more. Uh, Hogan believes you, you have one stance and one angle for your back for all your clubs so you don't you don't lean over more for the shorter clubs a lot of people do that Hogan did not believe in that anyway that's the whole book there's the back uh, and there's the book five lessons by Ben Hogan a uh, classic book really something that should be in every golfers um, library uh, even if you're not a Hogan fan like I said it's the best-selling book of all golf book of all time it's the most influential golf book of all time um, it's you should just have it in your library